Hey everyone, Tony D and Little Joan here uh, with more updates on the election. Now, I know some of you are saying, don't look at Gateway Pundit, they're crazy. Uh, maybe? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think they should be taken with a grain of salt. Um, but a lot of this stuff's coming in, and sometimes even InfoWars has correct information. So I wouldn't totally discount it, but I mean... Uh, just to go over some of the stuff they're reporting, Trump loses 32,000 votes in Pennsylvania in one hour in AP totals. Um, oh, this one didn't load. Why didn't this one load? Come on. Uh, this one here, local Republican Party publishes photos of ballot printers and voting machines left unattended in Mar Maricopa. I at least know that these tweets were deleted. I didn't see the tweets themselves when they originally, I mean, I guess they could have created these. <laughs> I don't think they did. I think they'd be in a lot of trouble if they completely created them. Uh, but apparently the story may be that uh, the Republican Party uh, didn't, in Arizona, didn't keep close tabs on what was going on there. And they didn't even inspect the equipment to print the ballots like, the Democrats showed up and the Republican Party didn't send anybody. But that may not be a totally big deal. They may have just said, ah, whatever. But considering this election, eh, it might have been a big deal. Uh, yeah, see, tweet is unavailable. But um, this one seems to be real. This is from National File uh, because I saw these tweets. Uh, the wife of the network's heir calls Trump a dictator, wrote, we did it after media declared Biden a winner. And these have been floating around the Internet for a while. So you can see why Fox News <laughs> is basically starting to lose its audience, because uh, at least this person seems to be pretty partisan and is in the upper echelons of Fox. And who knows what influence she has. Um, but Breitbart is reporting that Family Guy imagines a Donald Trump, Melania, and Pence hanging themselves in prison. Um, which uh, aired on November 8th. And they wrote it back in February of 2019 and put on the screen, Were We Right? Now look, it's no secret that Seth MacFarlane can't stand Trump. Um, you know, and I'm sure most of the people on staff, and I happen to know one of them, uh, are not Trump fans. Um, so, and, and this is just a joke. I mean, it's just a joke. It's a dark joke, but it's a joke. Um, but, you know, it's, it kind of flies in the face of the, hey, we're going to, we're going to pill back unity. You know, um, the, these kinds of things, and I love them, but ultimately you piss some people off that you're tr supposedly trying to win back. And it would be different if uh, Seth MacFarlane and the guys at Family Guy just pursued their comedy, right? And were pure, more pure about that. They just went down the comedy thing and they'd been bashing liberals and conservatives all this time on their show back and forth. But I don't think they really have. I, I think they're very biased. And because of that, they have created for themselves an audience and an angle that thrives on that, that particular kind of uh, humor, uh, one-sided humor. So, I mean, it's part of the reason I don't watch the show anymore because it was so blatant after a while. The two, and I talk about this all the time. The two part Trump episode was the last episode I watched. It just was too much. It was just too much. It wasn't even, it was funny, but it wasn't that funny. It was like, it could have been so much better if it had been closer to the truth and not so whacked out. That's just my opinion. I mean, it's Seth's show. He can do whatever he wants. Um, but, you know, at some point, you just got to feel like, why, why, are, why is my side the only butt of the jokes? 
Why, why is never the other side? Or very rarely. It's like watching The Daily Show. Like, yeah, you know, John Stewart at, at all the hosts was probably the most balanced. And even his was really geared towards, you know, liberals. But he would go after liberals, I would say, if I'm being generous, 25 to 35 percent at a time. The rest of the time was pretty much going after the Republicans and people who, you know, increasingly on the show towards the end were just clueless. And a lot of those hypocrites were people, you know, who were on the conservative side. But there are many, many idiots on the left side who deserve that kind of treatment. And they just aren't getting it. They deserve to be zinged. And I know why they don't go after them. Number one, they're violent. Okay? I mean, if you wanted to do a gutsy comedy piece, I'd go out and interview Antifa and F with them. <laughs> but I'd wear body armor up and down and be prepared to fight my way out of there. Um, and actually, I wouldn't even do it. I'm probably too old to get caught up in a mob and fight my way out. But <clears throat> that would be a edgy hilarious piece like if you went up into the portland riots and did some sort of man on the street thing with the antifa guys because those people are crazy and they're probably going to smash your camera equipment or at least chase you away but we don't see that kind of gutsy humor it's much easier to completely ignore that and bash republicans again and that's the other problem too like i make jokes about trump all the time i still do but you know, after a while, it's just, it, there's, there's only so much material to mine. And, you know, <laughs> the, the idea that, well, we're all going back to normal. You know, when you take a side like this, <clears throat> you, you take up part of the responsibility for that side. It's not just like, oh yeah, you know, let's vote for Biden and Kamala and Trump is an evil man. And then like, things go wrong with Biden, you go, well, I'm just a comedy show. Uh, well, you weren't just a comedy show when you were flacking for the for one side. Now you're just a comedy show? You can't, you can't do that. That's like people on the internet. That's their gig, right? You go back and forth with somebody on Reddit, and then finally, when they're done with you, they just go, oh, you're just a, you're just a tool, or I was just only kidding, or... You know, I, I'm not going to waste my time. And, you know, they just bail on the whole thing without acknowledging your point. That's a little, it's, it's disingenuous. And um, uh, I wish, I wish media wasn't so disingenuous, but it is. And I think that's why finally you're going to see a lot of these shows just go away. Um, and finally, Biden team says legal action is certainly a possibility as agency delays hamper, hampers transition. Now, I think what you have to ask yourself is why the Biden team would delay even for a second. Why aren't they on the ground with teams of lawyers fighting this? They have the money. They absolutely have the money. They raised more money than Trump. And they could raise plenty if they just asked their billion-dollar donors. Why aren't they on the ground fighting this tooth and nail? I would want them to be, but they're not. And yet, they're not really. They're they're kind of like, okay, you're gonna take us to court. We'll 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 cross that bridge when we come to it. Cross that bridge. Why don't you have people down there? <laughs> why aren't Why aren't the Democrats? You know, going full bore, raising money on on Twitter and every place else, saying we've got to fight this. They're not doing that. They're just pretending like Biden won. I think it's because they know they're going to lose, and they expect to lose, and then they're ready for their next narrative, which is, oh, Trump stole it. He stole the election, everybody. So they have no reason to to raise the money. They have no reason to fight it. Maybe they don't really want to win. They, 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 they've determined there's no way they could pull this off. And maybe this whole, whole thing was just to go, okay, we're going to do this and let Trump 
tear it all apart, but then we'll come back because we'll make him look bad in his second term. Maybe that's the plan. The plan is to hobble Trump so badly in his second term that they make gains. Maybe they might be thinking long term. They make gains in the midterm. Maybe steal back Congress, not steal back, but, you know, get back Congress and then, you know, crush Trump under two years of not approving anything he does. I mean, that that to me sounds like a better plan. <laughs> that to me sounds like a solid plan from the Democrats. If they did that, well, they would destroy Trump and his. Uh, I don't know what you would call it. Trumpism, they're calling it. But Trumpism would be badly hobbled if they did that. Because at the end of the at the end of two years of Congress stymieing all his plans, they they could point to Trump and say, see, he's a failure. See, this was a mistake. We had to go back to the old way. And then in twenty twenty four you could certainly see a Democrat taking it if they put up somebody other than the mummy, uh, not Kam Kamala. I don't think Kamala, I think Kamala's done. I mean, I think she was kind of just agreed to be the sacrificial VP in order to write a book and, and talk about and go on talk shows and talk about how, how she was robbed. <laughs> so maybe this is all a long-term setup to win back everything in 2024. Because certainly, if Trump doesn't pull this off, uh, I can't imagine Biden being able to govern very effectively. Um, but I'll talk about that in the next video.